Hej Ericsson. Hej. So I was just saying that uh, I give you one minute more and I will start. Um, good morning. And um, just to just to say to again the 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 presentation in in principle in English as obviously it's happening. But uh, if you want to ask something in Spanish, uh, that's also possible. Obviamente la presentación será en inglés, pero si hay algo que quieran preguntar en español, no duden en hacerlo. Eh, la idea es hacerlo más, uh, in, invitarlos a, obviamente a participar, así, así no sea en inglés, pero por razones del seminario eh, de Creative Commons lo haremos en inglés. Um, so, yes, please, let me, let me start and, and, and thank you for, for being here. Um, This is um, um, a compendium of different uh, projects and it, it basically in education, educational programs. And I will essentially show you a bunch of stories, but hopefully they will start to make sense into a bigger project that is essentially provide education uh, using open access resources, open access software, open access data. So once again, thanks very much. I am here. Uh, my name is Arturo Sanchez. I am from Venezuela, but I am talking to you from Switzerland. Uh, and I am right now at CERN. It's a physics laboratory here in, in Geneva, or close to Geneva. Um, the important thing about, let's say, my profile in this sense is essentially I am uh, one of the members of the Creative Commons uh, chapter in Venezuela. So I am the representative to the Global Network Council. Uh, and you can know a little bit more about what is that in, in the link. And essentially, I do a lot of outreach. So um, if we, for some reason you want to connect with me, these are the different uh, channels I said that you can uh, we can talk. So um, some relevant associations. So um, just to say that I have been working for several institutions um, here in Europe and in Latin America, but for the for the um, different projects I will show you today. Most of the, the, the projects are, um, are into this different institution, the ICTP, and we'll tell you what is that, uh, Cevale Dos B in Venezuela, and also yeah, grow to Latin America, as I mentioned before, Creative Commons uh, Venezuela chapter and an association called La Conga, and also I will mention what it's about. So obviously the, the, the presentation is, is It's a personal view, and this is not my paid job. This is not my job. The job I don't get paid for this. So I had, I would say, the freedom of to to mention well, um, uh, what all we ha we have done. But at the same time, it, it's it's important to mention that I am not talking about. I, I mean, on behalf of all this institution, but all this compendium of project that we have the 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 opportunity to execute. So. Yes, yeah, sure, Sanja. I will. I will do it. Um, so one of the the thing uh, is at the end also. So let me continue. I will. I will show you at the end another slide. So um, this is a, a uh, as I mentioned, a story of of open knowledge or, or knowledge transfer. Let's say, and at least in my mind, it goes in those in this way. Um, after obviously, this is kind of looking back. So this is no we planned it like this ten years ago or five years ago, but this is how we start to, to put apart the different projects and understand what are the, the elemental pieces, let's say, or at least that was the exercise. So the exercise I, I started to do was, um, I am a particle of physics, uh, at least by, by education, but I do a lot of computer science. So most of the things I will show you are essentially education in, on computer science and using pure science, I mean, physics or, or biology or, or um, air science as an excuse to provide um, open access resources, essentially to, to teach among other things, programming and, and computer science that we all know is, is, is a key um, element that more and more people should, should understand, not just because they will work on that, but also because it's a kind of technology that is, is every day. So saying that, most of my experience is in large experiments or in a scientific infrastructure. But also we have the universities and the and the institution institutions the difference like a, let's say the institutions don't provide a, a degree no but still they do scientific research uh, so usually from the universities is where you take this 
these uh, human resources, this population, these new guys that will will um, uh, learn the, the science and hopefully be part of the experiment in the future. And also are the people that you want to target with this kind of resources, uh, at least again in this environment, because this idea is to call their attention to, to bring them to this kind of collaboration that usually lasts for uh, many years. So many years, I mean, and one of these experiments can last 20, 30, 40 years. So you can expand uh, your entire career in a single uh, co uh, experiment. We also have another component that is the, the, the published results and the community. Community in this case, the scientific community or the people in the academia in some sense, where we deliver the scientific results, obviously also to the public, but I will mention that uh, in, in the next part of the of this circle. Um, and we have a conversation in different, in different uh, scenarios, let's say one is obviously the conference, the different, the publication that we do, the scientific publication, more and more in this kind of events, like uh, online for, for, for the reason that we all know, but this is something that in fact, in, at least in the physics that I do, we are very used to do this kind of online communication since, since many years. Um, and the last component of all this is the outreach and the capacity building. So again, we are talking that this kind of uh, facilities, you, you may be uh, very aware, trying to do any kind of outreach all the way from, you know, the very young people, uh, people who are just passing by and want to understand what they do there, what they do there, why they, they are spending this amount of money, because also these kind of infrastructures are quite expensive and, and it's important to keep the people um, informed of this kind of situation. But also all the way up in the, in the, in the, in the structure of the education, in the different systems, so high school students, university students, as I mentioned before, um, about what we do and how we do it. So this is the part of the capacity building. So sometimes, again, you want to teach programming, but you use the physics as an excuse. This person already with that skill can move to some other area and still be um, um, successful. Yes, without the skill, even if it's not doing physics anymore, but now it's doing a stock market or it's doing any other um, data driven um, uh, activity. So at least for how I see it, this is a, have all these components together is only possible when you have open access, open access in a very broad sense. It means in the not only in the data and the documentation in the science that you are doing, but also in the tools. So we, we also have, a, 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 just before we were releasing a session, and excuse me because I forgot his name, but he was a very nice presentation about the, the license of the different software. So that's also obviously very important. Um, uh, open software have been the, the, the engine of many of the current technology uh, from operating system, from the mobile system, from the way that we communicate through the internet. So the fact that this can, these tools are open source is quite, quite important for our um, life basically. So obviously all this passed through alliance and collaborations. So uh, when more than one um, institution, more than one group, more than one community put together efforts and their knowledge so to, to address a particular um, issue or to perform a project to, to create an idea, make it a reality. So this is also a story of different alliance between uh, institutions. So again, I have been working at Atlas CERN, but also ICTP. ICTP, sorry, stand for International Center for Theoretical Physics. This is a UNESCO um, uh, institution that prom uh, one of the key objectives of this uh, institution is to promote, the, if, again, it started with physics, but more open science in the, the, um, in the global south, basically. So we have institutions, ICTPs, let's say, in Trieste, in Italy, but also in Sao Paulo, um, in China, um, and in, in Africa, uh, in Rwanda, if I, if I remember well. So there is more than one of these uh, uh, nucleus of institutions that essentially uh, look for uh, knowledge transfer in, in science. And again, we have Creative Commons. In my case, obviously, I am very much attached to the Venezuelan community. So I will, I will mention a couple of ideas that we are starting to execute, not only inside Creative Commons, but also join effort with Wikipedia uh, uh, Venezuelan community. So let me start with one of these. Um, and again, there are many slides, but don't worry. It's, it's more to give you a story and it will be a lot of pictures. So hopefully uh, we'll be entertained to see all these uh, uh, um, all these stories to put it together. 
But essentially, uh, the idea of putting Atlas, Atlas is one of the experiments at CERN, and I will show you a little video about wh what it is for those who never heard before. Um, also about Cebale and ICTP, that is in this institution, to make science accessible. Science means, again, not only the knowledge, but also how to do it and, uh, and computer skills to, to perform this kind of uh, experimental analysis. So today's presentation is about that, about how these resources are put in place, how we deliver to the people that we want to, uh, um, um, we want to target, that we want to receive those resources, and how we do it in a, let's say, a traditional way and also in a remote way that obviously is even more important now, but it's, it was not new for, for us. So if we come back to the lab uh, with, the, um, with the students, again, I mentioned to you that we have the Atlas Collaboration have this um, different outreach program targeting the very young to, to um, you know, a very qualitative um, description of what we'll do here, what, they, uh, what we understand until now about the universe. These kind of questions are very appealing and, you know, and, and, and trigger the curiosity of the people um, all the way to, to the graduate students in the university. These um, people that will start to looking for higher education in, in different places of the world, maybe they can apply for, for um, master PhD programs in this kind of science. So once again, these kind of um, projects, uh, large scientific projects have a very long life, life time, lifetime, sorry. Uh, that means 10, 20, 40 years and some time. So, it's not only important the technology that they are using and obviously the funding, but also the human resources that need to fluid constantly to uh, to keep the machine running. And as any other industry you can imagine, the people move on. You know, you have here 10 years, people find another job, um, and go to another experiment, etc., go back to their home country. And so you need a constant um, replacement of people with very high and particular skills. Uh, so this is why this kind of outreach program is important, not only for the point of view of letting the people know what we are doing and why it's important, but also the survival itself of these kind of uh, projects. So again, as a part of Atlas Collaboration, as a part of, of this physics community has, at least from my point of view, once again, the, the responsibility to transfer the knowledge and training all the members, that's important. The members about the, on the, all these experiments are around the world. Atlas has more than 150, if I remember well, institutions that are members of the experiment. That means that we have more than 5,000 members between students, scientists, engineers, technicians that um, not only come, they said, to see the machine and to work on it, but also all these people that are around the world analyzing the data and understand um, the outputs of the of the of this very big machine, basically, but also have the responsibility to to train or to disseminate this knowledge to everybody else. You know, it's it's, it's a it's science that we do to understand the, the in principle um, the universe. So that's quite challenging and quite ambitious, but. Once again, one of the things that are important about all these experiments that they also produce a lot of very useful knowledge in terms of techniques, in terms of new technology. And this is the kind of knowledge that we also have to be provide to everybody in a meaningful way so that people can maybe find a very novel, uh, different use to that kind of technology. So um, I will put a video just to give you an idea of where we are. Um, and I will go f just to speed up this. Oh, sorry, this is not the speed. Um, because the idea is just to to bring you here in some way and also let you know where all this data goes in terms of the machine and I will show you after how it goes uh, in terms of the educational program that is the, the, the part about this presentation in the, in the summit. So the experiment, um, what we call the experiment, are these very big detectors that are underground as uh, so starting the video. Let me hide this, sorry. Um, and just to give you an idea, they are um, they are huge. This this kind of places are, are bigger than buildings. They are forty meters long, twenty five meters high. So they are a very big infrastructure. But the, the important part uh, again, that I, I I would like to you to take uh, home is that this information that is essentially the collision of all these particles, how they interact. So the physicists want to understand this thing. Um, this data is taken out of the detectors and goes through a different computer system. Um, and this computer system, if I, again, move out with this a little bit, will essentially 
um, take the data out of the experiment and bring it to different uh, computer center, to different computer facilities. Obviously, first start on site here at CERN, but after, due to the quantity and due to the fact that this data need to be analyzed by thousands of scientists and students around the world, this data need to be distributed later on. So again, there is no a single entity, there is no a single country in the world that can do this by themselves. And this is very important. That means that this science needs to be collaborative, not only because we would like to do it like this, but there is no other way uh, as, 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 as we have right now as humanity to do this in a single nation, for example. So we, we, we really need the resources of everybody. And this is what you can see in this um, animation where the data after is produced is distributed all over the world. So again, it's accessible by, by the scientists that are part of these different collaborations. Okay. So this is, this is also quite, quite, quite important. Why also the software and the different tools that are produced to analyze the data should be open because you can imagine that some institutions maybe are able to pay for license for some private software, but not the hundreds of institutions. This is when I'm talking about 150 institutions, <clears throat> sorry, it was only for Atlas. But if you saw the experiment, uh, the LAC, the, the ring, they have more than four experiments. So you can imagine this multiplied by four. So you have hundreds of universities, some of them in very um, wealthy countries, some of them in countries that not so much. So if you want everybody to work at the same level, one of the key components is to have open access technology to do all this research. So something that we do in the Atlas Open Data and um, um, and I have been responsible or, or co-responsible of this project in several years, have been essentially produced a smaller version of those thousands of terabytes that you saw flew in there in the, in the animation. Some of them been, have been curated and released to educate people, again, to for creating online courses, on-site courses and universities in different places uh, of the world to teach Again, the physics, but also how we analyze data in a generic way. So you can use this as a, just an example in a, in a computer class, for example. So we have many tools. I will not go I mean, into the detail because I don't want to bore you, but it's just to give an idea that we have a lot of data sets. Data set means um, you can imagine this as a bunch of tables. They are not really tables. They are even more complicated, but you can imagine this as a lot of tables with millions of, of hundreds of millions of data points inside that are all these collisions of what is happening inside. But we also produce uh, not only the data, but software that is done here or in any other places together with the students. So they, you know, together with them, we develop these resources. So we are sure that people and our target audience out and understand this kind of resource, they can use it. Some of them are Jupyter notebooks and there are uh, some of them are uh, more complex software. We also have virtual machines and everything is in different repositories in the public in GitHub and GitLab, uh, you know, just to have redundancy. We know that both are companies, so we are never sure, you know, if one day it's very, unla very un unlikely, but still uh, as a private company, we have to be sure that we are in more than one place and we cannot just lose access because somebody bought somebody company and, and we are in trouble. Um, so be, among the different projects and ideas that we have, we, again, we, we have been increasing the release of this data. So again, just to give an idea, a quant qualitative idea, not to go into the detail, but we started with the first release in 2016. This data was quite successful to, to train students at different levels. So um, four years later, and, and sounds long time, but it's very complicated to get this data out. Um, also for the for the politics or inside experiment, we release ten times more data uh, in many different formats uh, with more physics inside. So to address all the feedback that we have during the previous year, of people say, "Hey, this is good, but we would like to have this and this and this," or your data is um, is incomplete in this and this and this. So we gather all this information during the years and we put it together into a new uh, um, release that we have been using right now. So again, they have more physics, they have more variable. This is what the message I want to show, uh, uh, send it to you. And that has been quite powerful because together with this data set, we also have a set of Jupyter notebooks that have as Jupyter notebooks is also open source technology, allows you to do computing 
and look what is happening at the same time. So it's quite, quite um, useful. It's even, it's in some places uh, an standard now, uh, essentially because everybody now, at least in this kind of uh, data analysis, not only physics, but and not only science, but also in the industry, uh, knows what is a Jupyter hub, uh, sorry, a Jupyter notebook. So have been very, very useful to produce in this format to reach more and more people. Um, so again, we have this in repositories online. It's something that you also can run and public clouds is quite important for us to be sure that it's accessible, not only for people who have a very good computer, but maybe with a decent access to the internet, they can also uh, run this example. But even when it happens sometimes, and again, mention the, my background, the country where I am from, many places in the world is even difficult to have reliable internet. So one of the tools that we have been using since many years have been the uh, virtual machines. So virtual machines are essentially these, uh, uh, as the name says, a virtual computer that you can install into your uh, real, let's say, physical computer. But this computer has all the components that the, the people need in order to use the software, in order to read the, the data, in order to preserve this uh, environment. So that's also quite powerful because sometimes happens that you want to reach a university in far from you, basically. Um, people have computers, but they don't have the system administration uh, enough to put this into places. So we have been preparing these virtual machines so the students can get it and get exactly the same environment that I have, that we have here in the office. So that have been quite powerful. I also compare it like, a, you know, if you, so, you, you send somebody to, to the moon and you have to have a replica of the same model back home, because if they have some problems outside, you need to be able to reproduce the problem and send solutions. So in the same way it happened with this virtual machine, if somebody have a problem and it's in the other side of the world, it's very difficult uh, to, to give it support. You no, know? when you are in the same place, you can just enter and try to help her in the keyboard or helping there next to, uh, both in the same table. But if this person in the other side of the world, one of the key components that we have is that we are delivering the exactly the same environment. So if we, this person have a problem which should be able to reproduce and help uh, and help with some kind of solution. Um, all this makes a lot of sense when, and let me skip all this, when we put all these pieces together, we have been flying since uh, years with pen drive, we, uh, I don't know how also we call it, like a, a USB uh, memories to with all these components inside. So it sounds very simple, but it means that all this data cannot be too big. All this virtual machine, et cetera, cannot be too big because they need to fit in a normal pen drive, in a normal USB drive. So it can be, again, easy to copy for many people. And this information can be, you can leave one of these pen drives in, uh, in a physics department. And what has been quite powerful is that students come to the physics department and borrow the pen drive in the same way that they will do with a book. They take it back home, they copy, and they put it back. And the experiment have very, very successful to see because this was a dynamic that we didn't imagine when we start to, to do this project. That was essentially a, an idea for me to help me to carry the devices, to carry all this information when I am going to a university where I am sure that we will not have a reliable internet connection. So um, all these dynamics are, are, have been very powerful to continue doing what we are doing. Again, some of the, the, the content inside the pen drive, and we don't go too much into this, but um, Something that has been very cool is that all this information, all these data sets, all these tools, I've been starting to integrate it into different educational programs, so formal educational programs. Um, and, and I will show you a little another video to, to simplify better this. Um, obviously, there is a lot of multiple workshops to to make sure that this thing works, because something that happened, especially for people who, who knows, uh, uh, um, let's say, to work in the computers, that is always working your computer. That's all we find. But as soon as you leave your computer, put it in somebody else, it's problems start to appear. So we want to be sure as any other project, a product developer, um, um, to be sure that it works in many places. So one of the, the way that we test this is running workshop, running these little hackathons here at the lab and not in other places or, um, and here in Europe or in Latin America and to force ourselves to be tested in many different environments with many different people and address all these problems because there are always some 
what we call corner cases, no? things that you didn't realize until you see and say, okay, this is one more. And we put all these into the design and we come back and we repair it and make it better. So the exposition of all this is very important. So in terms of the outreach, again, I, I have another video. I will jump some of this, not to, to be too long, but I would like to show you how these different um, institutions have been playing a role um, in preparing and using these resources. So this is a video I prepared. It has already some, some years old, but it, it gives you an idea. Uh, we started with CERN, again, back here uh, uh, in, close to Geneva, but um, where we prepare and design some of these resources, but after we, some of these resources are taken to different universities by Atlas members, for example, and they produce their own uh, material uh, surrounding these resources. So, for example, there is here the university in Oslo, where they produce um, material for the laboratory courses, and part of this material is reused so um, the data that is released by, um, by Atlas Open Data is done with a CC0 license. So they, they can do all what they, they want with this. And also the resources that we mean, the resources, the Jupyter, the software, and many people using it to uh, enhance their university programs at different levels. Um, uh, this is all their video, for example, or this other part, we are now uh, at the University of Athens that they also develop some of these resources. So we, in fact, taking from them some of these resources and use it in our, in our place. Um, and the, you will see, let's say, different jumps on, on this video. Uh, first, starting in Europe, obviously, because most of the, the people who um, is in content access because it's close, uh, geographically speaking, let's say, and um, so they take the resources back to their, their institution and they use it in different formats for different, for different courses. But at some point, and let me see if I can accelerate this a little bit. Um, we started also to see the usage of these resources, not only to teach, but have been useful enough to create some thesis. So uh, um, students at the university level who create their thesis using the data to do uh, training on the science that they are doing or something completely different. Like uh, again, the, the previous video was about uh, two students that create educational programs. So they are no physicists. Their, their, their studies are in, on education and how they use these education uh, resources in another way. This is the first time uh, we were, in fact, in a Creative Commons Global Summit that was in 2017 uh, in Toronto, and, uh, and that was amazing. It was the first time that we interact uh, in person with the community. Uh, uh, just a few months before, we have a nice interview with Creative Commons about the Atlas resources. So that is also when we started to leave the laboratory, let's say. Um, and so on. We have uh, also projects at the high level, uh, sorry, at the high school level. Mm -hmm. So. Something that we found that have been very interesting is that this is not only for um, top scientists or, or again, PhD students, but we can really low the level and still teach something meaningful to people um, at almost any level. Yes, and as soon as you have a workshop with two, three days or a semester to an entire laboratory course, you can use this kind of, of material. So again, we, if you notice, we jump to America, we have in North America, but we, we start also going down um, and start to perform, oops, sorry, I forgot that we have also people using this in the University of Montreal uh, doing some uh, laboratory courses. Uh, in fact, it have been very cool because we get a lot of feedback from them. This is not only in English, but also in, in French. And they even got a, a prize for uh, a novel, let's say, or innovative way to teach this, this, this physics. So I have been very proud to see this project going in Montreal. We can came to, to Colombia, where one of the countries that we started to visit, uh, and I will, uh, will show you a little bit more about this collaboration between Cevaledos and uh, the ICTP that, and Atlas that allows us to visit universities in Colombia at the beginning, and also, <clears throat> um, and also in Venezuela. For example, here we, we, we are already in Merida in Caracas. This is the university where I, I, I studied physics. Uh, um, sorry, it was in Merida, now in, in Caracas, in, in another couple of universities. So we visit all these places with this material. And again, the uses all these pen drives that sounds quite simple, have been extremely powerful to, to enhance uh, 
educational program in other in other places. Um, we even go down to Argentina, this kind of Cordoba, uh, where we have students. So that something that maybe you are aware of with all this situation, the migration uh, in Venezuela, many people leave the country, but they still have contact with the universities. Uh, so we continue doing thesis uh, studies with the student, even when they are not anymore in the country. So Iskia was in Cordoba, I was here in Geneva and the university in Caracas, and we managed to complete their, their master's degree in this way, using these, these open resources. And again, we are back to ICTP and back to CERN. So let me continue. So when I say back to the ICTP, it means when we joined in this effort with the ICTP was to get um, resources and obviously more expertise in how to do this a little bit more massive. So what well, we can exploit these resources and use ICTP networks to uh, reach more people around the world. So we start to prepare again material and students in Caracas and Trieste here at CERN. Um, and together with Cevale Dos Bet, that is another program, and I will show you what is it now. Cevale Dos Bet stands for a um, very long name that is Virtual Center of Studies of High Energy Physics in Venezuela. Um, so starting as a Venezuelan project, be essentially because the members and here some publications, a scientific publication about our job, um, most of the members are Venezuelan at the beginning. So people who st we studied together or we were their professor, etc. But the program essentially, or the project, sorry, was to create a small program uh, as a kind of single course in physics where each of us create a one class, two or three classes, depending on our expertise, because even when we are all physicists, we do very different things. Uh, um, so that has been very, very valuable. We invite even more people. So more people join us after the, the community grow professors and, uh, and scientists in Colombia, in Mexico uh, or Latin America and here in Europe have been helping to enhance the, 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 the amount of people who teach in these courses. And again, I will go a little bit quick on the institutions. Essentially, we prepare these courses and we make, again, alliance. We make um, a network with the universities to teach these courses from abroad. And I'm talking to you since 2014, we're starting to do this. And the, the, we managed to get the, the students to get credit from the university if they pass our course. So the course started as a postgraduate just because it was easier for us to start in, uh, with the postgraduate, but we little by little started to go inside the, the undergraduate uh, programs that, that are more complicated to change, obviously. So we started in Venezuela and Colombia, but we grow to another institution later in Peru, and we continue growing and having students from Guatemala and Ecuador following the same course. And again, because of the individual agreement with the university, they get their credit, obviously, if they made the if they pass the course, they do the homework, etc. So the course is all recorded, all is open access also. So that means that some of the classes have been reused because again, the physics, for example, that we teach at the, uh, the if you can call it theoretical level, is the same yes, um, one year ago than now, it didn't change to the physics. So we can use the same class and in fact, use the time that we are uh, online, but synchronous to be more uh, dynamic, like a you know, questions and answer QA session because the student can see the video when they can. Um, and so this even make better the, the, the experience. So now I, I, I will show you a bunch of different pictures of all these uh, different collaboration, because when you imagine preparing a course for a university that is, is in another continent, you also have to um, um, make some kind of publicity, let's say, engage the people, engage the authorities, but also engage the students so they get uh, curious and excited to come uh, uh, to the different seminars, etc. So we have also programs like a um, um, uh, virtual visit that we call it. So we have this conference, but again, all this is happening since 2014, 2016. So it's, it's not something related, for example, to COVID. We, we were prepared uh, for this unfortunate situation, let we say. So also engage a lot with the with the press. So be sure that we, if we can talk with uh, um, you know a, a newspaper about what we are doing and what what this is important. This also help a lot because we need to do some kind of scientific diplomacy, if you can call it like this. If you want to engage with an ambassador, with a university, with an institution, you need to have some proof that you have some uh, 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 credibility what you are doing. 
Um, so this is more publications. We have the first thesis I mentioned, Iskia is the top right. Maria is in the bottom left, both uh, Venezuelan, but they were the first person that in fact created uh, their thesis using this data uh, uh, and after having reproduced in many places of the world. Their thesis are also open source, obviously open access, sorry. Um, open access is also the classes I mentioned, the tools, something that I wanted to show between this slide and this slide has thanks to this kind of um, uh, way of doing things, we have been passing, in the case of the virtual machine, I've been passing for being downloaded something like a 700 times. The, the time that I made this slide, that was a couple of years ago. And this, I took this screenshot today and have been downloaded for more than 5,000 people. So that's quite impressive for uh, um, something that was quite, um, I will not say complex, but it's very specific. So have been very nice to see. And obviously this kind of number also helped us to when, if we want to make a new alliance, a new contact, we can show them that we are doing, is having some success qualitative, but also with, at least with some numbers, as is quite important. So I never mentioned here, and sorry, PWS stands for Physics Without Frontier. That is the particular program inside CTP where we develop all this. So again, we start in 2014, and we started to go up uh, with the course and also visiting different institutions. When we are able to fly, we went to different countries to meet the students, those that were part of the courses, and also, you know, to make a seminar or something to call the attention of maybe possible new new candidates uh, to, to follow the classes. And obviously to, 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 to make it stronger, this, this uh, collaboration with the different universities. So since uh, all this year, we have been um, in, in Guatemala, uh, sorry, in Peru, in Ecuador, in Mexico, um, but we also have students in Brazil and Chile um, and have been very, very powerful tool uh, to carry all these resources. So <clears throat> again, we start in 2016, we continue 17, 19, um, and for obvious reason in 2020, we were not able to do this, this kind of round tour around the different con countries, but, um, but still we, we, we continue to do it even if it's uh, by distance. In fact, so here are some of the faces of the team that flies uh, and, and meet these people, Reina, uh, Daniela, both Venezuelan also, and Carlos is, is Colombian, all researchers at Atlas. So um, again, there is a lot of um, present in the website because it's quite important to have this uh, um, evidence of what we have done so we can continue doing and asking for, for funding for the different institutions, obviously. So. I want to, put a, for example, give you an idea of how it looks like one of these workshops. This is in, in Caracas a few couple of years ago. Different institution before was USB, Universidad Central de Venezuela. And this is uh, USB, or Universidad Simón Bolívar. Um, we also have a lot of component of design. And this is something that we mentioned at the end. So all the poster, all the logos, all the different stuff. That sounds trivial, but it's quite important to have it in place so everybody's happy. Um, seminars students, uh, just I just found this photo of Maria because this was her defense of the thesis. And I just know, knew, sorry, a, a couple of uh, months ago that she got a PhD in particle physics. So this has been a very long uh, story for Maria and now she's working at that analysis um, in a private company. So it has been very amazing to see her developing as a, one of these uh, key, um, or let's say, one of these different stories, but a story I can put a face of somebody who really started working with us in 2015. And now she's a professional doing this uh, in a private sector. But again, the, the transfer of the knowledge that she has been getting all these years, have been, uh, and obviously her, all this um, effort, it's, it's very nice to see uh, reaching this kind of uh, end. Um, so again, I will show you more, more of these events. The auditoriums continue to be getting bigger and bigger. So this is really cool. These are a couple of pictures uh, in Colombia. Um, some of these faces uh, are very young at that time, but they are continue with us, continue with us as a student making the thesis, uh, preparing their thesis with us. And we'll show you a little bit of that. Again, when we don't have enough computer for one person, one computer, we put two people to the computer um, and uh, Adam, um, sorry, you say, have you considered extending to Africa universities? 
Yes, I mean, we as uh, myself, not much because we are mostly focusing in Latin America, but the physics with the frontier program of the ICTP, yes, they do have programs also in Africa and in the Middle East, for example. So physics with our frontier is much bigger than I am showing to you. I am showing you only the Latin American part. So there is a couple of links in the presentation where you can read more, but yes, there are uh, similar programs for, for in different African countries. So this, for example, was an a scene where we had so many students that we didn't manage to have one computer for students. We have two of them. And it was so many students that we to ask, to ask permission in another laboratory, in another building, 45 meters away. And again, two students per computer. And so I was running back and forth between the two buildings, teaching them and, and, and doing the exercise. And to see this kind of uh, dynamic, the, the reception of the people, the students, the professor, we are talking about 2018 here, and um, that is not exactly one of the best moments in, in Venezuela, not even right now. <clears throat> so again, the, the amount of events and, and conference that we managed to, to be involved have been very, very important, important to continue participate in more, in more places to gather the attention of more institutions. What you can see here is exactly the same video that you saw 30 minutes ago. And sorry, I, I will go faster on this. Um, so what happened during 2019, 2020? So we continue doing this effort. In fact, this travel, and I, sorry, I, I, I mentioned that the last one was in 2019. It's not true. Uh, one of the things that we did, this is in, in, in Mexico and Colombia, but we also went to uh, Dominican Republic, and that was in January of 2020, uh, where we have the same tools, but obviously ta um, change it or modify in order to target a younger audience. So the students that you see here are um, uh, high school students for a very nice, uh, I mean, uh, um, liceo, high school place in, in, in the middle of, of Dominican Republic, so very far from the, from the sea. Um, they have a very, very cool project there uh, where they they teach in a very unusual way. They have, in fact, these little guys I have in this picture, in fact, they won a NASA competition a few months ago. So very, very cool to see this happening. So the, <clears throat> all this picture is just to mention that we continue doing it. This other one on top here is the, in fact, is in uh, Kurdistan region. So I was here at CERN, but talking to them that uh, uh, from from the distance. All these materials is produced and continue to be uh, 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 bookkeeping. Uh, we continue to curate it, to continue using it. That curation means also in the software that we start to create this um, and enhance this software repository that we use with the student. Um, and you can also quantify the number of people who fork the, the, the repository. It's the way to say that you take the, the, the reports from uh, uh, the, the students get it from them. Um, uh, Santa Shanta, sorry if I pronounced it wrongly. Uh, thank you so much for, for that. Um, let me, sorry to read your, your question. Self help a lot of students, institutions with education around the world. My question to you is how do you en encourage people, institutions to create courses for open source? Is there any funding for people who create those projects or is voluntary? So uh, about the first question, let's say, encourage people to create resources. We 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 just saying, you know, we are talking, we are working with CERN, with Atlas, with the UNESCO, ICTP, and all these people require the resources to be open. Yes, so they know from the very beginning that the idea is to produce something that we would like to make it. Uh, so we don't need to convince them. It's a hey, in the, obviously in a nice way. This is the conditions. This is the condition of all these uh, partners, and we need to obviously um, um, match this condition. So obviously, very a lot of people is, is on, get on board. About your second question, um, all these classes, so let's say the people who create the courses, the people who manage the software, et cetera, are all voluntary, yes. So we get funding, for example, to, to for a flight ticket because we were to, to we went to Colombia and the Colombians give you a room in somebody's house and we stay there. Um, we also get maybe a few hundreds to put um, a server because some of these courses need to run on the cloud. So we rented some computers uh, for a few hours or days. So we also pay for this. 
but all the rest is, is, is open access, but all these platforms, as you can see, are also open access, so uh, have been very powerful. But this is a thousands of voluntary hours of, of, of these experts. Um, sorry, Evan, I said there is a recent cover story in The Economist on the topic of open source intelligence, the phenomenon is gathering awareness. Yes, and again, this um, is it's not a question of popularity, it's also, I want to stress, a question of necessity. When you have to run a multinational company, uh, you know, when you want to gather expert in machine learning and all these fancy words, uh, artificial intelligence, all these guys use open source software. And so the companies need to, if they create something by themselves, they will be have something proprietary and will be very difficult to recruit smart people that do this because they don't, they need to res release the software because it's the way also to make aware of the people of their software and after call them back. Um, yes, all the all the programs are no are no still that advanced. So that's what they happen. We, for example, here and this is a very sh small um, compendium. Also, the other teams with this kind of uh, resources, we reach other people. So, in fact, we have a small conference in Tunisia uh, that is technically Africa. So sorry. Um, also in 2018, where I supposed to be there with them, but for some also political, not political reason, but uh, visas, etc., and nationalities mismatch, let's say, we were not able to fly to Tunisia. But anyway, we were there in some way. Um, and we reached, in fact, a, a lot of, of, in this particular case, was uh, very nice to see also a lot of females working on, on climate uh, analysis of data. So I am no, I don't know anything about data analysis in, in climate. This is not my field, but I showed them how they can take some image, how to do some reconstruction, some visualization. And they that are their expert in their science took this tool and use it for something completely different. And this is really, really cool to see when you see somebody doing uh, uh, something completely new with what you have produced. So I've been very interesting to see it. We also target, um, and this is maybe related a little bit with the um, with Chanta question about the funding for people who create the resources. One of the last thing that we did with the ICTP, I mean, not because finished, but one of the most recent, sorry, um, was something what we call brain game in Venezuela. So there are many professors in Venezuela who have very little in terms of the salary, something that is uh, almost a joke sometimes. So we found some funding through them to create a kind of fellowship, but not for the students, but for professors. Yes, for people who is teaching there, who is creating material there, who continues to, 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 to work in the university. And one of the conditions, of course, is that the material that they produce, the classes that they produce, has to be also open source so we can continue using it. So we have some, um, I pass very quick, we have some fellow, the first time that we did it, uh, we award four professors, um, two um, for the, University of Los Andes and two in uh, Central and Simon Bolivar in Venezuela. We were very successful in that one that we, uh, ICTP wanted to do it again. So that was very cool. And so we did it last year, 2020. We have even more fellows. I don't know where they are. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't have it here. I have the link. But um, maybe I, I, I am too late to show you this, but we have more faces. So that has been also very interesting. We have 10 different professors who have been awarded with some um, funding. So they enhance, say they can continue working, basically. That's the idea. So that has been quite powerful. We continue having programs. We, P, uh, sorry, we undergraduate thesis, even when they are far. I am the supervisor of all of them. And through ICTP, um, also I have some funding for them to as simple as things like, uh, you know, you need to print these things. And so because you know, the university in the world still wants you, you know, to print the 100 pages of your thesis in two, three different copies, because these are the rules of 100 years and continue to be the same rules. So uh, uh, we find uh, some resources for them also. And right now we are, these students are now presenting their, their thesis. So these are a screenshot of things that just happened. Uh, one of them uh, one month ago and the other maybe uh, five days ago where they are presenting this, the seminars of their thesis. So it has been very cool to see these guys uh, going uh, to the end of, of this project. So they are years or following these students. We also have a more interesting project and i sorry I didn't have, uh, I don't have time to, to show you too much about this, but this is a, an, an enhanced version of Sevale. Once Sevale was like a, let's say, 
difficult to com to continue because the the people was all voluntary. Sometimes you get one, sometimes don't. So we apply for a bigger project to the uh, European Union. So this is one of these, um, um, I think it's um, Horizon 2020 project, so uh, Erasmus Plus funding from the European Union. And we engage with even more universities, some of them obviously already Sevale um, partners, let's say, and a lot of other institutions in Europe to create more courses in physics in Venezuela and Colombia and uh, Ecuador and Peru. So we have now uh, master's courses that all the students follow. So it's the same way as Sevale, but in a, at a bigger scale and with more, uh, it's not only one course, but now we have uh, um, eight courses and all of them receive uh, the credits from the university. And finally, the last program that just finished last week, uh, we also run a course uh, with the same resources. So again, we are talking about the data set, the virtual machine, but in this case, there are uh, students in physics and engineer. We, I was teaching something that is called advanced topics in computer, uh, just a fancy name to call the attention of the guy. We have, um, we started with 27 students, 30 of them received credits. Some of them were uh, listeners of the, of the program. Not only are, not all of them are only students, but some of them are professors in the university who want to, to obviously to know a little bit more about these things. We finished with 15 students. Um, so the 13 that have write the course in the university, they get the credits. So the, the success rate for the, for those that get credits was 100%, 56 in total. We have a certificate for all of them. All the classes are recorded and, and, uh, and I will continue using this class. That's the, the cool part. And the last thing that we are producing right now is a, a, a data tone. Uh, we create Commons Venezuela, Wikipedia Venezuela, and the W show um, in, in subjects that have to be with, the, with nutrition and food safety in humans. So this is something that we just started, um, but we, we started in April, May to talk about this, and we are very close to execute the first, uh, to perform the first data tone. And so it'll be very interesting to see also these collaborations. Thanks again to all these stories before I also show this story to the people in the W show and say, we can do something in a similar fashion. Um, and I think I will skip this because it's too late, but I just wanted to say that all of these have a lot of design. We have poster, we have logos, we, and we created together with Stefania. Stefania is our CC Venezuela designer. Uh, she donate also all her time to produce all these animations, all these posters. Um, all the uh, uh, the background, the fonts, etc., that we use because we would like to. Obviously, it's important to have a nice component in terms of the design to call the attention of all these people uh, and to show a professional face um, on that. And that's it. So thank you, thank you very much for your attention. It was a lot of lives. I know the story is very long, but I, I, I it made me excited to to tell you all about this. So. Hopefully some of these things call your attention and we can, why not continue talking in, in, in the forums on Slack, et cetera. And maybe uh, if you are in a country that we would like to visit, be part of there or, or help us in any other way or, or just to replicate the model will be amazing. That, that's the, the idea of, the, of all this here. <clears throat> so I don't know if it is, I, I see something more in the chat, sorry. Um, uh, the, thanks, Evan, for the economist uh, link. Um, okay, yes, thank you. This is the project the Brain Gain in Venezuela um, and have been s s very, very interesting to see also because the, the professor prepared now the resources. So as you can see, relies also in local people more and more. It's, that's quite important. And this is something that I also saw in all the different presentations during the summit, but particularly yesterday with cable. Um, and the objectives of the UNESCO is to obviously rely on the people. Uh, it's not the kind of that we go there, we show something and we come back like a circus, but it's more to empower the people with all these tools and they continue doing it. And this is what we are doing with La Conga right now, for example. So thanks again. I don't know if we, I know we have only one minute more, two minutes more, but if somebody have any other question, the slides, uh, I think they should be somewhere here, but if you know, uh, they are also in the Slack and I should be able to simply copy and paste this link here. 
sorry that this is the long list link but um, it should work exactly in the same way as the short one and thank you very much all the uh, the contacts I was mentioned um, if you want to to reach me anyway and, and thank you so much for being there